welcome. Um, I have to get used to the loud noise and uh, that my voice is, I have a pretty loud voice myself. So um, uh, I hope you can all uh, chill, relax, so I can talk, relax. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk to you about data quality. Um, a little bit about data quality and a little bit about attributes form. But my main idea today is to introduce to you the concept of field domains, which is a fairly new feature in QGIS. Uh, it's been around for almost two years now, but it's still not widely used, I think. And it has a few issues that might uh, uh, need to be solved to, to really make use of uh, field domains. But first, a little bit about data quality. Um, for me, data quality is about uh, the attributes of factor data. Uh, I'm not talking about raster data or anything, but just factor data um, where you need uh, to add new features, or uh, edit uh, data. Um, and what you really want to do to improve the data quality of the, uh, those attributes is to restrict basically the input. So if you have a field like uh, a color, and um, the colors are limited to a certain amount of colors. It's a very great idea to have like a drop-down list with those colors uh, pre-populated. So all you have to do is choose the correct color. So you make no typing errors. Uh, you cannot uh, add colors that were not uh, allowed. And the same goes for uh, uh, integers and decimals. Uh, it's a great way to introduce ranges. So if your uh, attribute can only be like if an, an in integer between 10 and 25, create a range. So you, your answer can always be between 10 uh, and 25. That's a little bit about data quality. Now, um, QGIS has a very uh, good way of handling those things using the attributes form. And in the attributes form, you can choose for any uh, uh, yeah, the pointer is a little bit. For any field in your uh, layer, uh, you can set a widget type. And the widget type value map, uh, what I call is, is like a drop-down list. You can use it as a drop-down list. You can pre-populate this with the values that are allowed for that specific field. Um, and then when you start editing data, and you will see that you get a drop-down list in your attributes table or in your form or in your uh, uh, forms, yes. Um, so only those uh, values can be uh, added or changed into those values. Uh, the same goes for integers and uh, decimal data. There's a widget type that's called a range. Um, these are all very useful. And you can also set some constraints down here. Like it cannot be null or it has to be unique. Uh, if these apply to your data, you can set that in this uh, attributes form. There's always that little help button down on the right screen that will link to the documentation and learning you and teaching you how to use these, uh, these widgets and these attributes forms. Um, this works great within QGIS. However, uh, there are a few, well, not that uh, nice things if, if you want to use it more often. Um, if you want to apply like a value map that you created to another field, there's no copy-paste functionality. So you have to redo the, the setting in the value map. You have to retype uh, the values or re-import it from an ACSV, which is a possibility. But there's no easy copy-paste. Um, another thing to note, and I'll come back to that, is that attributes form actually is a layer property. Uh, it's not an integral part of your data set. It's something within QGIS and only exists within QGIS. Um, that means that if you share your data file for others to edit or add features, you need to share the styling as well. Now, there are many ways to do that. Uh, share the project, share the styling uh, document, uh, save the styling as part of the geo package, all kinds of possibilities, but you need to remember to share the styling and the person opening your data file uh, needs to open it in QGIS, otherwise the value maps in the ranges won't work. Now, a few years ago, um, there was a uh, addition made to the geo package uh, standard, 
um, which uh, is called data column constraints. Now that at first put me a little bit off because it's not really a constraint. Uh, what you can do with data column constraints is that you can create what they call field domains. Um, and a field domain basically is either an enumeration, which is uh, the same as a coded value map or a drop-down list, as I call it. Um, you can create a range for numerical values, and you can create a glob. And I have no idea what a glob is. Um, some of you might. Um, but it's something that you can create within a geo package. It exists in a geo package uh, framework, but Kugis needs to know how to handle this. So in 326, uh, the first feature uh, was developed, uh, which were called field domain management capabilities. So from your browser panel, you could create field domains and you could add uh, and, 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 and exit of, uh, um, um, use these field domains uh, in your geo package. At first, it was only used for geo packages. Uh, I have a link to the visual change log in QGIS explaining exactly what this is about. Um, and then in 328, it was added for non uh, geo package OKR sources, uh, main focus being uh, federal geo databases. That was actually the trigger for this development. Uh, it was funded by some Dutch provinces. And they wanted to increase the interoperability between file G database, geo package, working both in QGIS and in Arcus software. Um, and that was what created uh, these changes. Now, how does this work? Um, the field domain management is accessed through the browser panel. If you right click any geo package in your browser panel, there is this setting called new field domain. Um, and in this new field domain, you can create either a range or a coded values domain or this weird glob thing. Um, very self-explanatory. Just click it and you get a few, uh, just a simple box with a few settings uh, to create your values or your range. And when that is done, you see that below your um, geo package, you get a new section called field domains where you have all your field domains have uh, names, and then you can apply them to any uh, field. Now, the great thing about this is that you can apply those field domains to any field, preferably a type matching uh, field, um, in that geo package on any layer. It doesn't matter. It's not layer dependent. It's based on, it, it's part of your geo package. Um, that means there's easy copy pasting. You create one value map, you apply it to different fields and different layers, um, all by just a few clicks. Um, and multiple fields can have the same field domain assigned. Now, this sounds all good, but there are a few uh, issues with this. For now, uh, once created, uh, when you right-click uh, one of those field uh, domains, you can't do anything with it. You can't see what's in it. You can't see what values are part of that field domain. You can't edit it. That's not an option at this point. Um, but since it is part of a geo package, and a geo package uses SQL uh, to build and talk to itself, um, you can. Um, and at the end of the presentation, I've got like five bonus sheets uh, where the SQL queries are to create, view, and edit. Uh, field domains if you want to. Um, but there is also uh, a standing feature request by a user who wants to have this part of the uh, browser panel, which I think is a great idea. Make it at least viewable. What is inside those domains? Because you created them maybe a month ago and can't remember exactly, hmm, is this actually a, a useful field domain for uh, my field? Now, field domains um, and to which fields they apply, that's stored in special geo package tables. That's why you can access them with uh, SQL. But QGIS still needs to interpret these, what, what's called data column constraints. And how does QGIS do that? Well, actually, QGIS uses, again, the attributes form uh, system, uh, systems. So a coded value domain 
if you look at it in the attribute form uh, uh, of that field, it automatically creates the value map widget for you, with pre-populated with the, uh, the, the values that you have put in your geo package uh, field, uh, field uh, domain. Um, same goes for a range. If you have an integer range, QGIS automatically creates a range widget with the minus, uh, with the, min the minimum and the maximum value uh, in between. Uh, for decimal as well, you also get a range widget for a decimal uh, range. Now the coded value in the integer range, that works fine in QGIS. But there's something weird going on with the um, uh, decimal range. First of all, if you look closely at the presentation of the field domains, um, sequels and sizes are two domains that I created. The first one is an integer type, the second one is a decimal type. You can choose this when creating a field uh, range domain. However, QGIS, you see by the symbols, thinks they are both an integer. And that is because they are actually created as numerical. That's the setting in the geo package uh, uh, specifications. And numericals, just well, a bit wider, an integer and a uh, decimal can are both numerical. Uh, but QGIS has some issues dealing with that. And you see that because the widget type for a decimal range, there's two things with this. Um, first of all, when you create a decimal field in any layer, QGIS doesn't use a range widget, it uses a text edit widget. So for some reason it created a range widget. That's sort of nice, but there's something going on here. My range widget has a precision of zero. So I cannot enter a range value. So I have to manually set the precision uh, before I can actually use it. Now this is quite annoying, uh, it's not fixed. Um, I've created an issue for this. Um, any help from you on, on how to solve this, how to read the SQL uh, statements, how to read the, the, the information in the geo package on, uh, let's say the number of decimal places that you need. Uh, it's not quite clear uh, because it's not stated when creating the field domain. There's no indication how many decimal places that you need um, uh, for this. So this is quite a challenge to get this working. Collaboration on data editing. Um, since field domains are part of the geo package um, and not of the QGIS styling, that would mean that if it's, it's, it's really easy to share your, uh, your data, and um, the value maps and the ranges are automatically applied for anyone without any styling documents. They always use the same value maps and same ranges. Or does it? Um, there's also an issue with this as well. Um, I'll come to that um, in a minute. Um, another great possibility, um, and I hope you can tell me more about that, is that it should be possible to edit this data in other software. I mean, the geo package can be read and edited in other software. Um, and since the domains are part of the geo package and not of any QGIS styling document or anything, uh, this should be possible. Now, I don't know other software, I, there's probably some around that uses geo packages and they might so be uh, able to use the field domains created, uh, which makes the interoperability between for a geo package with other software um, and editing uh, the data in there uh, even better. Which is of course not possible if you just use the attributes form because that's an QGIS thing. Um, what is also great is that when you export a layer which has field domains to a new geo package, it automatically copies all applied field domains into that geo package. That wasn't the case at first, um, it just didn't. Uh, this was fixed uh, in 3.36, um, but not backported to the current LTR. I'm not quite sure why, maybe they saw it as a feature instead of a bug. Um, 
But from three thirty six onwards, uh, when you just export your layer as a new geo package, all applied. So not all existing field domains, but only the applied field domains in that layer. They are copied uh, to the uh, new geo package, which makes uh, makes this much more redundant uh, uh, in using your data. Now back to this editing data, um, which will always use the applied value maps and ranges. Well. There's something going on with the widgets. Um, basically, don't change the widget type. I noticed in using this that when I change the widget, um, let's say from a value map to hidden, because I, I, I don't need it in, in some use case, or I just change it to something else for whatever reason. Um, once you change it, you can't get it back. It's gone. Kugis doesn't reread your layer doesn't reread the geo package to see that there is a value map or a range active on that field. Um, and this is quite annoying as well. Um, because for if, if for some reason you want to apply a styling made by someone else to your uh, layer, and that styling also consists, uh, contains some attribute formed information in it that might override your value map settings uh, or your range uh, settings. Um, and then they are gone. And the only way to get that back is to, re have to, is to um, uh, remove and add the layer in its entirety from your project. And that's not what we're looking for. That's not, not really helpful. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is a bug, if it's intended. Um, not quite sure if it needs a feature request or something. I have created an issue for this um, to see how we can deal with this, how we can improve that if I change the widget um, and change it back to a value map, that my value map is again pre-populated with uh, what's inside the field domain. Early conclusions from my part. Um, I like the potential of field domains. Um, but I think it does need additional work in QGIS to get to that potential. Uh, there are some issues, uh, but I think uh, in the end, um, if it's well integrated in the attributes form, um, it's a more redundant, more st better suited uh, solution for uh, data quality uh, aspects. Any questions? Okay, great. Thank you Gerard, very much for your super interesting presentation. Also for me, because one year ago, I also struggled with the, I don't know, plenty of uh, attributes in the layer and I had to copy each each value map, but then I tried to, I think some Python script and something works, but you know, this is very useful. Thank you. Uh, okay, please, any question? Thank you for the presentation. I just discovered that I was not aware of the field domain in job package and I was quickly looking. Can you tell me where it's saved in the um, job package? The field um, domains? Yeah, the, the information is saved in, new, in two new tables. So at the moment you create a field domain, two new tables are added to the um, geo package schema, which are not visible in QGIS itself. You can only see them using SQL. Now, luckily, the uh, browser panel also has a execute SQL uh, option. And on the bonus sheets, I've got the SQL queries uh, where you can just put a, a simple uh, select all from the table. So you need to know the table names that are created, but they are always the same, of course, because it's uh, written in the specifications. And then um, all the field domains that are created can also be viewed. All the field domains that are created, all the value maps and all the ranges, all those settings, uh, you can see them in those tables. Yeah. Thank you. Please, we still have time for one more question. So, okay, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So.